Hello, in this video we're going to look at Fazir's kernel. He's a Hungarian mathematician. And we're, we're looking at the Fazir kernel because we're going to need it when we look at the Fazir theorem in regards to you know Fourier series. And it's really a, a Kassaro sum. And again, I'm probably not pronouncing either of these names correctly, but I, I should be close. So it's a Kassaro sum of the Dirichlet kernel. So in F6, two videos before this one, we looked at the Dirichlet kernel, which was this. And then in this video, we're going to look at Fazir's kernel, which is, is a Kassara sum of these Dirichlet kernels. And so it's defined like this. So there's n plus 1 of these Dirichlet kernels starting from 0 to n, and we're going to divide by m plus 1. And in this video, we're going to show these four properties, that it integrates to 1, that it's positive, it, it's uh, bounded by this, and the limit as x goes to 0 is n plus 1. And actually, these are all pretty much summability properties, except for the fourth one, where it should be the integral from you know 0 to pi or 0 to a half should equal 0 but we're not we don't need that one for what we're doing so we're not going to delve into some ability of kernels so the proof of a is um, we want to show that it's one so we replace the Fazir kernel by the the uh, Kassara sum of Dirichlet kernels which is this and we proved in F6 that each one of these Dirichlet kernels is 1. So then this piece is 1 and we're summing 1 n plus 1 times and we get n plus 1 and they cancel and it's 1. Now the proof of B is this. So we have uh, the Fajir kernel is this. We replace it by the weighted not the weighted, the Kassara sum of Dirichlet kernels. And then in F6, we prove that the Dirichlet kernel is actually uh, this piece. Well, it's this divided by that. And um, we, I took out this piece from the sum because it's not, there's no, it's not indexed by n. Now, but we want to add another sign in here so we can use a trig identity. So what I do is I multiply and divide by another sign of one half x and to get this. And then the product of signs in, um, in F2 in my playlist, we showed that the product can be represented as this difference of cosines. And then everything else comes out. There's actually the, the one half in front of here, but I took the two out to the front. Then, oops, let me mention this before we go. This right here is a telescoping sum that when it's zero, you plug them in. Then when it's one, and, and then because this is plus one and the previous one was not, you get lots of cancellations. And so this sum ends up going to this one and notice the color change because my pen ran out of ink um, and so the bottom is still the same so we have this so now um, this right here we showed oh no this is a, it's a power reduction trig identity in F2 so this top part goes to this notice that one half is in part of it so that it goes to this so and actually this is what we wanted to show but you know since this is squared you you know you can take you can think of it as the whole thing squared and well anything squared is greater than or equal to zero and then of course n is greater than or equal to zero so the whole thing is greater than or equal to zero and that's what we wanted to show now for part c I want to, yeah, ignore what's under my finger here. I want to show a property first. So we're going to let uh, x be between 
pi and negative pi. And that's kind of, you know, since we're periodic in that, in within 2 pi, for, and we go from minus pi to pi, but we're going to let a delta be a little bit less than whatever x we choose. Notice it's not equal to zero. It's always positive. And if we look at this function, 1 over 1 minus cosine of x, it looks like this. So if we plug in a value of x, whether it be negative or positive, it's the same value. But if we pick a delta that's less than x and plug it in, we get something that's slightly bigger than if we would have chosen x. So now to prove number 6, or number c, the kernel can be written like this, and that's from, you know, part b. Then by F2, we use a power reduction formula on both of these, and that we prove that in the second video. We get this. Now, this top part is always less than or equal to 1. So if we replace it by 1, something bigger, then the quantity gets bigger. And now, this, if we look at this whole piece here, which is what we looked at here, and we replace x by delta, then we've made this quantity bigger. And that's what we wanted to prove. Now part d is we want to let the x go to zero in the Fazir kernel. And then we replace it by the Kassara sum of the Drishle kernels. And we note that the Drishle kernels is continuous. So we can, we can just plug in zero here into our limit. Well, this, um, oh, for any Dirichlet kernel at zero, you know, because it's the cosine, the cosine of zero is one. So we're plugging in, you know, one of them. So we're going to get in back. So, so remember there, there's n terms here, and we plug in zero, so we're going to get the Drishle kernel, which is this, but there's n of them. And so we still have to take the sum, and, and there's probably a cool little formula that you can just do it quickly, but I take the sum of one half and the sum of n. So the sum of one half, there's n plus one over two of them, and then the sum from here is that n, n plus 1 over 2. Then we can cancel the n plus 1s, and we're left with uh, 1 plus n over 2, or this. And that's what we wanted to show. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.